Hi, I'm Alex. I'm Michael. And today I'm going to explain how an electromagnetic induction flashlight works. And I'm going to use an example and go through some calculations of it. An electromagnetic induction flashlight utilizes the pr principles of electromagnetism discovered by Faraday. Instead of batteries, the flashlight is powered by a strong magnet passing back and forth through a solenoid of wire. As we talked about in class, a changing magnetic field through a loop of wire induces a current in the wire. The current, however, is alternating, not direct, because the induced current creates a magnetic field that opposes the applied magnetic field. So, the current in the wire when the magnet is entering the solenoid is opposite that of when the magnet leaves the solenoid. This is problematic for two reasons. One, the LEDs don't allow current to flow both ways, and two, only half of the energy input would be used to create current. Physicists solved both of these problems by using a series of diodes. Diodes only allow current to flow in one direction in the wire. This circuit shows how the diodes work in order to make both currents flow through the LED in the same direction, thus using all of the energy input into the system. In order to store the energy created by the magnet and solenoid complex, the flashlight contains a capacitor in its circuit. This capacitor stores the charge of the current on each of its plates from the, sol from the magnet passing through the solenoid. Once the reed switch is connected, then the charge flows from the positive plate of the capacitor through the LED and onto the negative plate of the capacitor. Here is the full circuit of the flashlight. Once the plates are balanced and charged, the flashlight must be recharged. Now Mike will run through an example problem using our formulas from class. A typical LED uses 30 milliwatts of power and has a resistance of 0.01 ohms. Will the LED in an electromagnetic induction flashlight light if the change in the magnetic field through the solenoid is negative 0.6 tesla over 1.2 seconds? The radius of the solenoid is 2 centimeters. So first we got to uh, list our givens. Our delta B is negative 0.6 tesla. Delta T is uh, 1.2 seconds. Our radius of the solenoid is 2 centimeters. And our resistance in the LED flashlight is 0 0.01 ohms. Alright, so using Faraday's law, we're going to calculate the amount of volts that we generated by shaking the flashlight. So Faraday's law is given in amps, which also equals the change in volts, which is delta V over delta T times the number of turns in the solenoid. Delta V in this situation equals the change in the magnetic, magnetic field times area times cosine of theta. Area is always going to be the same, which is pi r squared and cosine of theta. Theta is 90 degrees in this situation, so cosine of theta always equals 1. So. We can now substitute this in, so delta V equals the change of B times the area over the change of time times the number of turns. So now plugging in our numbers, we get that we have negative 0.6 times pi times 0 0.02 squared over 1.2 seconds, and all of that times 30, which is the number of turns in the end. So after multiplying all this together, we get a voltage, voltage 0 0.019 volts. All right, we just calculated the V generated. So using Kirchhoff's law, our V generated equals the delta V in the capacitor. So he's flipped the switch on of the light bulb, and the delta V of 0 0.019 goes through the resistor of 0 0.01 ohms. So the current through the LED light equals 0 0.019 volts over 0 0.01 ohms, which then equals 1.9 amperes. Now we're trying to figure out if we have generated enough power to light the LED light. So we know that power equals current times voltage. So we just plug in the current and voltage that we calculated. 
So 0 0.019 volts times 1.9 amperes, which that equals 0 0.036 watts of power. We knew, we knew that we only needed 0 0.03 milliwatt, I mean 0 0.03 watts of power. So we, we got enough power here to light the light bulb.